Hello, I am Allison. I work at the Cumberland County Public Library and Information Center at the headquarters branch, and I'm introducing y'all to a team program about tabletop role-playing games. So yes, it's very nerdy, but nerdy is in, so I think we should all have a good time with this anyway. And yeah, basically I'm going to introduce y'all to the basics of tabletop role-playing games. So any old hats or veterans out there, y'all might be like, oh, I know all this already. And you know, that's awesome. You could always refer your friends to this if you wanna get them into role-playing games because I think they are great ways to have fun. So without further, further ado, let's get started. All right, so when you think of tabletop role-playing games, you might think of a couple of familiar examples like Dungeons and Dragons. Um, they have become really popular in the past five to 10 years. They've always been popular in kind of nerdy groups, niche, niche groups that like fantasy literature and science fiction, but in media such as The Adventure Zone, which is a very popular podcast done by the McElroy family, and Critical Role, which is done by professional voice actors. They have really surged in popularity. Um, if any of y'all have watched Stranger Things on Netflix, um, Dungeons and Dragons also features very prominently in that too. So um, the reason why tabletop role-playing games have become so popular, in my opinion, is that they're truly a creative vehicle for exploring storytelling, characters, ideas, you can have tons of fun finding spontaneous scenarios with your friends and there's like an element of surprise and unexpected joy, drama that comes along with it. So unlike a scripted video game, um, you can take your adventure or adventures in whatever directions you want. Instead of going straight to the final boss, you could always spend some time in a humble village solving a murder mystery. So that's one reason you could argue that tabletop role-playing games are so popular, and that's the reason that I'm trying to get y'all to play them yourselves. They also work very well if you're social distancing too. So I will provide y'all some resources for getting started in general, as well as doing it in a safe social distancing manner if you want to meet up with your friends digitally. So the basics of the setup of, of a role-playing game, if you're doing it, is one person will be the, I don't want to say head honcho because everyone is important in a tabletop role-playing game, but one person is the dungeon master or DM. Um, they basically guide the campaign or the story. They know various parameters of different enemies if they're fighting or other characters or um, NPCs, those are non-playable characters, that you might interact with as you play. Each person playing also can either create their own character or use a pre-created character template with unique goals, strengths, and weaknesses. You can put tons of thought into creating your character, or you can go simple and bare bones and figure things out along the way. So you can invest a lot of time and treat this like a real big hobby, or you can just, you know, dip your toes in, see, see if you like it. So how do you get started with playing your own role-playing game? You can, as I said before, put as much or as little time and preparation into starting. Um, you can often find preset character templates and the amount of prep work you need depends on the scenario and how long you plan on playing. There are often tabletop role-playing games or TTRPGs that are meant to be played in a single sitting for an hour or two and those games will obviously need less resources and often come with preset characters. There are um, books out there that assist you with both creating your character, running a campaign, being a dungeon master. 
And one of those resources that we have at our library is a copy of the fifth edition to the Dungeon Master's Guide. I would definitely recommend checking that out if you're interested in becoming a Dungeon Master or even if you want to just learn more about Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, there are also short for your inexpensive campaigns out there. Um, if you do some Google searching and have your parent or caregiver kind of check things out with you, see if you are interested in trying them. So there's a plethora of resources for new players if you want to get into creating your own character. One thing that's a unique part of tabletop role-playing games is something called an alignment system. So this website, easydamas.com, generalizes alignments into a few different options. There's generally good and evil. It's often not as simple as that sounds because each good or evil has a spectrum of lawfulness, chaos, or um, neutrality. And you can read all about these. They form different character um, personality types and they would form the decisions your character would make while you play. Um, there's a mobile app for the um, Apple devices called, oh, excuse me. There's a mobile app called Fight Club that lets you put in all your character information as well as um, rolling dice for you. There is also a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition character sheet application for Android and iPhone if you have either of those devices. Um, if you want to go paper, um, you can get downloadable blank character sheets for Dungeons and Dragons via Wizards of the Coast. If you look at this website, and all of these links will be below, um, you can get a free PDF of all the different aspects of your character you want to detail. It also provides history on this website about Dungeons and Dragons. So it can be very helpful for you if you want to get into playing. There's also pre-made characters that exist for Dungeons and Dragons. Um, you can see this one, they are not named, but they have backgrounds, alignments, um, stuff like strength and other attributes that influence combat. They have aspects of their personality such as responsibility, um, different abilities they could have when fighting, what armor they would want to wear. So as you can see, it can get very complex. But the nice thing about those pre-made sheets is that you can look at them, refer to them, maybe even modify some things if you want to, but you don't have to jump all the way in and have to figure everything out for yourself. So, once you decide you want to play, what are you going to do? You have to have dice to play Dungeons and Dragons, don't you? Like, that's not something everyone has. So, the helpful thing is that, thanks to the internet, we have access to online dice rollers! And this is very helpful because Dungeons and Dragons and other RPGs can sometimes use strange dice, not just your regular six-sided die, but things like a two-sided dice or a three-sided dice. All those funny dice that you see that look more like pyramids or dodecahedrons rather than just a cube. Um, you can roll for these here, and that is a very helpful resource. You can also find ambient sound playlists, and this, this is extremely nerdy, but if you're wanting to get you and your friends in the mood for your campaign, you can find, you know, like woodland sounds and things like that to really get your campaign feeling immersive. There's also lots of platforms out there for if you want to host or start a campaign, even while you're not able to see your friends in person. And this applies whether your friends live one mile away, 100 miles away, 1,000 miles away. Um, if you 
find out your friends want to get together for Dungeons and Dragons, you can use Google Meet, you could use Zoom, you could use the messaging platform Discord, you could use Skype, and you can hold virtual gaming sessions with your friends, and all of these are free resources. So as long as you have your parents okay to do this, you can get together with your friends and host a virtual D&D night. So it doesn't have to be where you have a specific space reserved. You don't have to go to your friend's house when we have a stay at home order in place. You can meet up and play D&D, discover all sorts of fantasy worlds with your friends, even from the comfort of your home. So with all of that said, I hope y'all are now interested in Dungeons and Dragons um, and Feel free to ask us to put the Dungeons and Dragons um, Dungeon Master Handbook on hold for you if you're interested. And of course, if you find any other campaign guidebooks that you'd like us to get that we don't have, you can feel free to request us to purchase them and we'd be very interested in doing that. And thanks. I hope y'all have a great rest of your day. Thank you.